Thank you so much. My name is Adam Green. Very excited to be with you today uh, talking about a topic I'm very passionate about, civil discourse. You know, civil discourse is a pair of words I guarantee you've heard thrown around by politicians or TV personalities alike. However, it's necessary for us to really look at civil discourse in a new way. We need to shift the momentum shift in politics. And I'll get to what that means in a minute. But first, I think we can all agree you, know, you felt uncomfortable talking to someone who you disagree with. You know, it could be about politics, food, sports, really anything. But specifically regarding politics, it's safe to say you've been a part of those uncomfortable political conversations and you've been avoided or uh, you know, blocked by someone or unfriended by someone. Perhaps we've been the ones to avoid and unfriend people based solely on their political ideologies. Right? You know, politics is an extremely tough subject to talk about. We can hardly even agree to disagree anymore. You know, a more cynical perspective on this entire speech might even say that the only thing we can agree on today is that the political divide in this country is deeper than it has been in a very long time, really threatening to tear apart many of our current and future relationships. You know, we know this is commonplace in the United States today, especially following some of the most contentious election battles this country has ever seen, really just take place in the past three years alone, creating widespread division amongst those who differ politically. You know, we don't see many civil conversations occurring between those who differ politically. Uh, and this isn't something that's just exclusive to Washington, D.C. This is something that's coming into our own homes in all facets of our daily life. You know, something I see more of often nowadays is the use of these ad hominem type of attacks, which is basically when uh, you attack a person rather than the argument or uh, position that person is maintaining. You know, the use of these attacks just destroys substantive and educational discourse in this country. This doesn't just occur in presidential campaigns or televised debates. Again, I say it's coming into our own homes, our family lives, ruining our relationships in all parts of our daily life. I mean, debate used to be about using statistics and numbers and facts to put forward your best argument, right? But today it's about using uh, just a one-line singer to effectively wreck and embarrass your opponent on live TV, right? And we do this in our home lives, too. And when we use these type of attacks, we grow apart, right? We separate. Really, we segregate. I mean, really, this is modern-day segregation of thought because we polarize ourselves into thinking that you and me can't have a civil conversation with one another if we disagree, right? And it doesn't matter what political party you vote for. It doesn't matter what political ideology you subscribe to. We are all guilty of engaging in this terrible, terrible discourse that has really trashed our country in the past decade or so. You know, we see this when we, we see these results when we evaluate poll numbers and statistics also. Pew Research Center for U.S. Politics and Policy said that over 50% of those that they surveyed in 2018 said that they felt uncomfortable having a conversation with someone about politics. Right? Over 50%, over half of our country feels uncomfortable even having a political discussion. Right? And when we feel uncomfortable, we separate. When we disengage from those conversations altogether, and we walk away from those necessary conversations. And this is where we go wrong in this country. We need to act, you know, go into these conversations whether you agree or disagree, and have a conversation with someone. I mean, over 50% of the productive dialogue in this country is truly astounding. It's really no wonder why we cannot sustain long-lasting change in this country from year to year. It's because partisan politics keeps us fighting, keeps us separated, you know, prevents us from engaging in civilized discourse. Partisan politics forces us to keep switching directions every four to eight years, and prevents us from building up that momentum towards more meaningful progress in this country. You know, we can agree, we're all very passionate about solving the large issues in this country that affect us all, right? Though you and me may misalign on how we ultimately want to solve that big problem, our shared passion alone for wanting to solve the problem should be enough to encourage us to come together and compromise and listen to one another and engage in civil discourse. I mean, without civil discourse, we just trap ourselves into our own political ideologies and uh, shy away from substantive debate that ultimately could lead to compromising change and benefit for us all. So to kind of go back a minute, I'm a second year student at the James Madison College of Michigan State University. I study political theory and constitutional democracy. And my friends and I founded the James Madison College Conservatives in January 2018. Uh, we call it JMCC. It's a political organization on campus devoted to the promotion of bipartisan civil discourse for students and faculty alike. And I'm here to share with you my experience regarding civil discourse and what it means for all of us. We need to shift the momentum shift in politics. And what I mean by this when I say that is we need to engage with those we disagree with most often, as often as possible. I mean, stop lying in your own little echo chamber of your own political thoughts. 
get outside your comfort zone and engage someone with differing views. I mean, we gain momentum in solving political and social issues in this country when we unify with the ones that we disagree with the most for some common purpose, right? That common purpose being, we all want to solve these major problems that are affecting us all in this country, and we know that one single party or a group of individuals can single-handedly solve on their own. We have to remember it takes a concerted and team effort together to find solutions in this country. To kind of provide some context, and for example, at Michigan State, uh, James Sissi has worked with the College Democrats and other organizations on campus in the promotion of this civil discourse. And we've helped, in just the last year alone, provide over two dozen bipartisan policy forums, student-led debates, and candidate town halls based on all the most pressing issues of the day, including immigration, uh, healthcare, gun rights, some very contentious and polarizing topics. And we host events like pizza and politics, desserts and debate, donuts and discourse. We wanted to do spaghetti and shutdown, but ultimately the shutdown's over. So uh, perhaps in another two weeks we'll have another chance at it. Just, it's a nice opportunity for us to engage with one another in a civilized debate and engage with one another over you know, things like food. You know, when we ultimately founded the organization, there was a lot of uneasiness between my friends and I because you know, we too were really confused on how to engage the other side in a substantive and educational debate. I mean, a lot of these issues we were so polarized on. We disagree with them uh, in the largest ways. But really, the first step to success is trying. So we've reached out to all the groups on campus and encouraged them to come to our debates and engage in these discussions, yet uncomfortable, were definitely necessary for us to succeed in this country. You know, we ultimately saw uh, you know, a need for this organization as we saw the political divide I was speaking on earlier growing in the United States, but also just at Michigan State in general, you know, where we had groups on both sides of the political divide just constantly and viciously attacking each other. You know, whether it was on uh, the internet and social media or the newspaper, at campus events around the university. You know, so we sought out to begin to build that bridge to the other side and look for our commonalities we share with one another. But when we did found the organization, there was a lot of pressure from those outside groups for us to not engage in those conversations. Right, and this is how we feel most days. People don't want us to engage in the middle. You know, we were the weak conservatives. We're too moderate. You know, because we wanted to reach across the aisle and have a conversation with someone who ultimately and most likely would disagree with us. You know, our meetings started off very small. You know, the group in general was very small. I think we had uh, like seven people at the first meeting. Uh, but over time, we gained momentum on campus and encouraging people to engage in the conversations and engage with one another. So now today, a year later, we have 94 members in the organization. Uh, and mind you, that's just the conservatives. We have many more liberals and libertarians that week in and week out come to these debates and come engage in these discussions because they know it's a civil environment where they're going to be able to hear from me and I'm going to be able to listen to them. You know, it became so cool when I had like, uh, members of the College Democrats reaching out to me personally and saying, hey, we would like to come to your discussion. We'd like to come to the debate and engage in this discussion without being unnecessarily attacked or personally attacked. You know, they didn't want to see these ad hominem attacks used against them. And they knew this was a nice environment for them to do so from. You see, the right to free speech isn't necessarily the main thing we promote in the organization. Though it's prevalent and exists and is a founding factor of our group, as it should be all across the country, you know, our main focus has always been on listening to each other, providing an attentive ear to one another, and ultimately hearing out those differing viewpoints. I mean, we all know we have this right to free speech in this country, but I think what we all forget is with that right, we have an obligation to listen to one another. Lend an attentive ear to one another when somebody is enacting the right of free speech back onto us. You know, we saw this main divide uh, occur at Michigan State, and this is where we introduced the, kind of the notion of civil discourse. And this is what civil discourse can do. I mean, we're, the main ideas of having these debates is to showcase the worth and merit of someone's proposed ideas in contrast with your own. Right now, will you always find that your, uh, you know, some of these ideas has any worth and merit to you? I mean, will you always be convinced that you know, my idea has more worth and merit than yours does when we part ways following that discussion with our spaghetti and pizza and we're going our different ways? I mean, no, certainly not. But I think we can be certain that we have the right intentions in mind when we're forming our political opinions. It's not based on some bias or prejudice we just assume some Republican or some Democrat must have. You know, we have to remember in this country, our unity is our strength. That separation, that political divide will always be our weakness. As the great President Abraham Lincoln once said, 
a house divided against itself cannot stand. And isn't this most certainly true? I mean, look around. I mean, we just went through the government shutdown. We see many Republicans and Democrats fighting so desperately and passionately and viciously for it, yet ultimately achieve no long-lasting progress on it. Reason being, there's not many issues in this country we can solve single-handedly. It takes a concerted and team effort of compromise to form long-lasting solutions in this country. So stop this segregation. Stop this separation. I mean, come back in love. Share a pizza, share a hug, give a handshake, have a discussion. Remember that in this country, it will take all of us working together to promote long-lasting change. So engage each other. Look for the bridge to the other side. Look for those commonalities we share with one another. Find that passion you have for solving some issue and combine it with somebody else's passion for solving that same issue and use it as your bond and unity to work together. You know, it's when we celebrate our commonalities, we tolerate our differences, and bond together in the pursuit of bipartisan compromise that we ultimately form the best political momentum in this country and we come closer to solving issues. And once we have that momentum, we will be able to solve all these problems in this country and promote long-lasting change for the benefit of everyone. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you so much.